If I was in charge of multitracks for one day, these are the five things that I would change about the playback app. Now, I wanna start this video just by acknowledging what this is. This is a kind of pie in the sky. If I could do anything, what would I do? If I had endless amounts of money uh, and Multitracks team said, well, you're in charge. These are five things that I think would be kind of fun to implement and change. Um, I wanna acknowledge creating an app, developing an app is way more difficult, way more expensive than you may think. If you've been a part of this process before, um, you know how incredibly hard it is to create and release the app. In fact, when I was at Multitracks and my role at, at the time was to lead the team that created playback. Um, it, it's just way more difficult than you think. I'm thinking back to those times now, I'm so glad uh, I'm not in that position anymore. I'm so glad I'm not leading a team creating an app. Um, it's incredibly, incredibly stressful. So uh, this video is not to say, look at those idiots. They, they're doing it all wrong. Why did they not add these features in? Some of these features may be on the timeline. Some of them may just be things that uh, can't happen because of one reason or another. But again, I just thought this would be kind of fun if I was in charge, uh, endless possibilities, this is what I would do. Now, I want to mention before I dive in, um, I, I did this last week for Prime, this week for Playback. Next week, I'm going to do this for Ableton Live. Um, so this is part two of a three-part series. If you want to see part three next week when it goes live, hit the subscribe icon and then hit the bell icon so you see exactly when that video goes live. I post a brand new tutorial every single day, and Wednesdays are all focused on worship leaders. So uh, if you don't want to miss any of that content, subscribe uh, and hit the bell icon. Now, to start, I'm primarily, primarily going to be talking about the desktop app just because it's a little easier to show. And, and a lot of the things I would change are related to the desktop app. Uh, you have to have playback premium in order to run this on a Mac. Um, uh, but some of these also apply to the iOS, iPad, iPhone versions as well. Okay, let's start at the top. First two are gonna sound really similar, um, but I thought it's worth uh, splitting them up into two separate things. Uh, you'll see why. So number one, if I was in charge of playback for a day and could change anything, uh, I would start by simplifying the app. Now, I love the original vision of both Playback and Prime. Uh, Prime created from uh, by Loop Community, Playback created by Multitracks. I love the original vision of we want to create an app that's solely dedicated to one thing, just playing back content, playing back tracks for worship leaders. Now, in my personal opinion, this is just my personal opinion, I think playback is starting to go the way of getting a little too complicated. I, it's starting to go the way of adding uh, um, more features than I personally think it should have. The, the goal, of, uh, the real sweet spot of these apps, again, is to stay focused on running tracks, to stay focused on using content from Loop Community and Prime, uh, using content from Multitracks. But as you use these apps, you, you'll encounter points of friction where you go, man, I wish they would let me do this. I wish they'd let me do that. In fact, I'm gonna share one of those points of friction, I think is point four here in a second, that um, I wish the app had it, but I don't think it should ever get it because if it did, it goes a step too far. And that's the fine line when you're developing apps. If you've ever been in that process, um, there's a point where you have to really, or when you start, you really have to understand the worldview of your app. What's the one problem you're seeking to solve? And there's a point where you you listen too much to customers and add too many features that eventually playback becomes um, uh, a dumbed down Ableton uh, that, that adds lots of features that are um, great, but just make it too difficult to use, right? The original promise of playback, the original promise of Prime where, hey, if you're looking for a really simple way to run tracks, like not to record, not to edit, not to do extensive editing of, of audio, just a real simple way to playback tracks and make simple edits and have flow and have freedom and flexibility, then boy, do we have an app for you. I think playback is, is kind of missing the mark there. Um, personal opinion, but that's my personal opinion. So let me show you a couple of things that I think are taken a little too far. Um, one, I'll give this as a practical example. When I was doing my shootout of Playback Prime in Ableton, uh, and I started to really talk about the MIDI features, um, one of the things I was uh, trying to figure out how to do is, okay, how do I add MIDI notes into, uh, into Playback? Uh, I knew the feature existed. I knew before I left the design of how to do that was implemented and designed. I, I just had never done it before. So I went in the app and I went, okay, um, edit MIDI. So I probably hit edit. I go in here. Maybe I click this and add MIDI. No, that's song section. Uh, okay, how do I do this? And then uh, I think I had to go to YouTube to figure this out. Uh, I realized, okay, so I can long press, so like hold edit, but with one button, right? Um, and so at first I thought, okay, well, I, I right click, right? Because it's a desktop app. Well, now I don't right click. I have to actually hold this down. 
okay, MIDI cues. Then I get into MIDI cues. And then I thought, okay, well, how do I edit a MIDI cue, add a MIDI cue, okay, let's add that. Uh, and then here's the big big moment for me is I went to delete the, the MIDI cue. Then I went, okay, uh, right click, okay, delete. So I added one here, so I probably click that. Nope, that adds another one. Uh, and again, I had to go back to YouTube, and this is the guy who added a lot of the features and designed, uh, not all, but a lot of the features that are in playback right now. Uh, I was a part of the team that did that, and I could not figure out how to delete a MIDI note. Uh, side note, if that's you, you go up here and click this and do delete, nudge, or edit MIDI cue, right? So I can edit the existing one. Um, but again, looking at that, that, that just feels like, man, we've, we've gone maybe a step too far with, with adding uh, MIDI out. Now, uh, personally, again, if I'm in charge, uh, if I could do anything, what I would say is I would keep the ability to send MIDI out to songs, but you'd have to purchase those pre-done and playback. Um, I, I would remove the ability for you to add your own MIDI, or I would simplify the process to add it. Maybe we'll get into some of the complication of that in a second. Uh, let me show you one other thing, just personal preference for me. Um, the uh, we'll, we'll talk about this message in a second. I've got a lot of fun things to say about that. Um, going into the pad player, I know that for a lot of worship leaders using pads, is really essential to, to what you do. It's essential to how you, you transition. But to me, adding the pad player into playback um, just, just adds a layer of complexity that I don't think needs to be there personally. Now, you know, I even created the pad player for Ableton Live, um, uh, you know, based on talking to, to worship leaders that were using audio pads and I think missing some really cool things they could do. Um, but just for me, again, a simple, way to playback tracks, playback has gone beyond that and is growing in complexity. So if it were me, I would simplify it a bit. I would simplify some of the features. I would put a, a, a hard like fork in the road that says we will not go past this. We will not add these other things. Okay, on the same note, number two, the second thing that I would do personally is I would simplify subscriptions. Uh, let me explain why. Uh, let me go back to the app. Actually, it's what I was showing you earlier that I commented on that I wanted to mention as an example. So um, one, to use uh, playback on Mac, playback for Mac, uh, I have to have a, a playback premium subscription. Great, I understand that, that's fine. I wish it was available for intro and, and pro as well too, I'm not sure why, um, but okay, whatever. Let's, let's say playback premium, I, I can live with that. So I wanna go in and back to this MIDI thing uh, let's go to MIDI cues here. I'm gonna add a MIDI cue, and you saw this message earlier. Let's let's get out here, let's hit done. Um, I don't know if you can read this or not, but it essentially says these MIDI cues uh, have been saved uh, in the set list and can only be ac accessed on this device. Save MIDI cues to the cloud and use them in other set lists with a Cloud Pro intro or higher subscription. This is, to me, where it starts to become um, so complex and so, dare I say convoluted, that I think Multitracks is kind of hurting themselves by the amount of subscriptions that they have. So in this particular case, I can add a MIDI cue to my set, but in order to sync that MIDI cue to my set, I have to have a Cloud Pro intro subscription to sync that. Now the set list mechanism to sync set list between devices already exists, um, but in order to save MIDI cues, I have to have the Cloud Pro subscription, right? Um, uh, if you dig into the Multitrack site and look at the different subscriptions they have. So I pulled up this, this page here. In fact, this is a really helpful utility uh, if you're trying to decide um, uh, or to, you know get a look at all the subscriptions, trying to decide the price of stuff. Um, there's Playback Pro, there's Playback Premium, uh, which can give you different features. I'm, I currently have Playback Premium again in order to get access to all this stuff. Uh, but then again, I could add Cloud Pro potentially I might need. In order to get access to other things, I'd have to have Chart Pro, but then maybe Chart Builder. Um, but then do I need Playback Rentals? I'm not really sure. Uh, one thing I think that Multitracks has done well is they're trying to simplify. And there's different tiers and subscriptions where if you add that in, then you get like a version of Playback included with that. But personally, I think for me, to simplify things, I would say, okay, there's these playback tiers, there's features, and within these different tiers are different cloud levels. Now, financially, you know, when you upload something to a cloud, it's it's costing money, right? It, it's gonna take, um, uh, it's gonna cost multi-tracks money. So uh, I understand why they detach the cloud features from playback premium features, but I wish, you know, that MIDI queue thing is a perfect example to me. 
I wish there was just a way that uh, I could add a mini queue in and I hit save and it's just done. I think uh, there's a certain point where multi tracks is making it difficult for people to, you know, use and enjoy their apps by just having too many subscriptions. Again, side note, uh, if you want to get a little better view at the subscriptions that are available and different things, you could go to multitracks.com slash pricing. The pricing calculator is kind of a, a helpful um, a thing to use, helpful utility. But again, I just wish it was simplified uh, a little bit more. Another thing I wish they would do is add a button to let you just subscribe directly to the From Studio Stage YouTube channel because there's so much helpful information Every single day, 10 a.m. Central, I post a brand new tutorial. Every Wednesday, it's content focused on uh, just worship leaders, just like you. Um, but you don't have to have that button. We don't need it right now. You can hit the button on this video, the subscribe button, and enable the bell icon so you know exactly when I go live. Okay, uh, let me take you back into the app because I want to uh, show you, uh, I talked about this in the Prime video last week, but I think one of the biggest features, biggest things that I would change immediately, day one, as soon as I had the ability to, is I would make the ability to upload directly to the app. So if I'm in Ableton Live, I could do command in and use a keyboard shortcut and I could uh, uh, add content directly into my Ableton Live set, just drag audio in and just be good to go. Now uh, for both Prime and Playback, you have to upload content to their cloud. Again, I wish Multishacks would simplify subscriptions a bit so that um, you know, the, the cloud subscription is a part of a playback feature tier. Uh, but regardless, neither here nor there. Um, I, I wish I could, particularly on desktop, I understand why this would be a little more difficult, probably impossible to do on iOS, but I wish on desktop I could go up to the menu here, do command in, uh, I could drag my audio files into my set here. Uh, I could save them. I could add my um, my locators. I could add my markers, my song sections, uh, tempo, time signature changes. Uh, again, I will say I love that Multitrax has implemented that level of detail into cloud content, um, but it just takes way too long to upload cloud content to playback. In fact, that's one of the reasons typically um, when I'm talking to worship leaders and I say, okay, what, what are you using to run tracks? They say playback. Uh, you, are you buying all your stuff from Multitrax? Well, no, we buy a lot of our stuff from Loop Community. Well, I go, well, <laughs> you're wasting so much time. You think you're saving money, but you're actually uh, costing your church a lot of money by the amount of time it's taking you to upload content, to format. Whereas if you just used Ableton, you could just, just drag stuff in. Imagine for a moment, again, let's say we did command in. We uploaded our stems directly to the playback app. Uh, we added some locators or whatever. And then again, tie this to like a cloud subscription that when I hit save, that file automatically then gets synced up to the servers. Like let's use the same mechanism that we use right now for that content. But imagine we could do all that in the app directly on the desktop app. Let's make it just desktop. But then that information then gets synced back up to the multi-track servers that could be loaded onto an iOS device, iPad device, you know, whatever it is. Um, to me, that would make the process of using content other than multi-tracks content a whole lot easier. The, the fact of the matter is if you're using Prime and you're using content from anywhere other than Loop Community or you're using playback and you're using content from anywhere other than multi-tracks, you're just wasting time and it's costing you way more money than you think you're saving. So I wish those features would be added. Okay, number four. Uh, again, I, I hate to sound like a broken record. I talked about this in the Loop Community uh, video, but I wish there were some more editing features to playback particularly on the desktop version. Again, this kind of defeats point one that I said, which is simplify. So maybe this, this overcomplicates thing. We, do, we don't add this, but uh, for me, I wish I could hit edit here. I wish I could right click on one of these song sections and change it from course to maybe make it a bridge or uh, something that's kind of the classic uh, multi-tracks thing. If you look at bridge here, we have bridge one, bridge two, bridge three. Sometimes it really is like bridge one, bridge two, bridge three, but a lot of times it's just bridge, but they've chopped it up into individual song sections to try to make it easier for people to edit, particularly in playback. Um, I wish I could go in here and say, okay, combine into one song section, or maybe click this section, hold shift, click the last section and right click and say join or combine or something. Um, again, those are a little more advanced that kind of contradicts what I said in point one, but I wish there were some more editing type features uh, in playback. And then uh, number five, that takes me to the, the final thing here. I wish that playback was available as a desktop first, maybe when we say desktop native app. And you're going, but Will, look, you've got the app on your desktop uh, right now. Yes, I do. I have playback for Mac loaded on the desktop. But if you look at the app, it, it basically looks exactly like the app for iPhone, the, the app for iPad, just kind of a blown up version, right? It's, it's taken a touch first 
um, interface and, and, and allowing you to run it on Mac, which I think is great. I'm glad this exists, but I wish that um, there was a version of playback that was specifically designed for, for Mac. I wish there were different views that I had that I was able to use. I wish I could really get in depth with keyboard shortcuts. And I, I believe there is some keyboard shortcut stuff you could do with, with playback, which is great. Um, but I wish like, for example, earlier I, I said, I wish I could take this and hold shift and then delete a song section. I wish I could not have to go into edit and I could right click a section and do delete or, or reformat things. I understand why it's not there because it's not there in the iOS version. Um, but let's let's translate. I believe strongly the medium is the message. The medium of a desktop uh, uh, using a mouse to interface with something requires a different types of interaction. So for me, um, again, I wish the, the, the app that ran on Mac was a little more desktop first. Uh, as opposed to just kind of a blown up, you know, um, iOS, iPad uh, type app. Again, I, I don't want this to come off as me complaining. I don't want this to come off as me saying they're idiots if they don't do this. This is just, if I could do anything, this is exactly what I would do. Let me know in the comments though. I want to know what's one feature that you wish Multitracks would add to the playback app. Maybe it's a, a desktop related thing. Maybe it's all the apps. Uh, maybe it's something related to subscriptions. Let me know in the comments, what's the one thing that if you were in charge, and again, let's be kind with our responses here, but what's the one thing you would change if you were in charge that you would add to the playback app? And again, make sure you join me next week because I'm gonna do the same thing for Ableton, uh, Ableton Live, and I'm gonna say these are the five things I would change with Ableton Live. Let me know in the comments again what you would change with playback, and we'll see you on the next one. Hit subscribe, enable the bell icon, see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.